Well, hello, everyone. This is Brother Donnie, Country Homestead Preacher. I'd like to welcome you to 10 Minutes in the Word, and I'm sorry I'm having to record this on my phone. Uh, I had an issue with Phil Moria, Phil Mora, and don't really know what's going on with it. But anyway, welcome to 10 Minutes in the Word. I'm Brother Donnie, your Bible teacher. It is 7-14-2021, and we are studying in the book of Acts, chapter number 3, if you want to go ahead and turn there. And I want to thank you for coming in and, and Bible studying with us. And I want you to remember now that our uh, July giveaway, we're going to give a book away on hymnology. And that book will uh, give some history of, of some of the hymns of the faith. And really, I think it'll build you up in the faith. So uh, be looking for more information on that. I am so thankful that you've come and want to study God's word with us. So go ahead and take your Bible, turn to the book of Acts chapter 3, and we're going to open up in prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for blessing us. And Lord, you so are good good and kind to us, Lord. And we we lift up those who may be sick and afflicted. We pray that you'll touch them. Lord, we pray for Papa Rock. We pray for others that, that are afflicted, for Christy Betts, for Judy Bond. Lord, for others that may have relationship problems or issues. Lord, we commend them to you. And Lord, we ask that you'll send a mighty movement of God and that all of God's people who lift up the name of Christ will, will boldly share your gospel. Father, we also ask that you'll open this word up so we'll understand. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are in the book of Acts chapter number three. And if you'll remember, the other day we stopped it at about uh, number uh, five, Acts 3, 5, and Peter and John had went to the temple to pray at the ninth hour. That would have been about three o'clock. As was their custom, they prayed three times a day and they were still going to the temple in the synagogue. And uh, so they were going about their normal business and there was a beggar at the beautiful gate who uh, had been lame since he was in his mother's womb. And it was common at that time for those who could not make a living, they may have some, some, some form of illness uh, to beg at the temple because uh, in their minds, more people would be charitable to them. So we're going to pick up now in verse number six. And remember now, the beggar looked at Peter and John thinking that he was going to give them an offering. And verse six says, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, this is the first uh, recorded miracle in the book of Acts that we are given um, uh, details about. Now, we know that the apostles already had been performing miracles based off of Acts chapter 2, but this is the first one we have recorded. And Peter is so excited to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He's trying to walk in the Spirit and he recognizes that this person has a need and he recognizes that he has the ability through Jesus Christ to meet this need. Notice what he says. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Now, let me remind you folks, this beggar had been, uh, he had been uh, lame since he was in his mother's womb. And uh, he had never known what it was to walk. He only knew suffering and tribulation. But yet Peter says, I don't have any gold. I don't have silver, but I ha what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus. And he took him, lifting him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you, this is far different from what you see from the fake, heretical uh, healers that propose to heal today. In other words, you could go on the TV at any time and look at some of these healing services, and sometimes you'll see uh, back pain get healed You'll see stomach pain get healed. You'll see, uh, uh, you may see someone that says they got a short leg, they're, they're, you know, their legs straighten out. How about some eyeballs growing back in the head? You ever seen that? How about a man getting up out of the ground that's been dead three days and walking? You ever seen that? How about a man who had been 
been uh, uh, stricken from his mother's womb, but all of a sudden he stands up and walks. And my point is that when the Lord Jesus Christ heals, he heals immediately, he heals fully, and he heals organically. Now, we know that God uses medicine, of course. We know that God uses doctors, of course. The Bible says all good things come from God. And that is certainly a way that God heals. But I'm going to tell you, when we read of this narrative in the book of Acts, this is a real deal healing. You know what's always, uh, what I can't never figure out? Uh, some of the, the heavy uh, word faith churches that are, uh, that, that preach healing uh, or, 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 excuse me, or rather perform healing at every service, I often wonder why they got handicapped parking in their parking lots. Why would there be handicapped people? And I tell you what they do, they say, well, this person don't have faith enough to be healed. I want to ask you a question. Where was this man's faith right here? This man was healed because of the will of God. That's, that's the point I'm making. When God decides to heal, he heals no matter what the person's faith is. Now, there are times when Jesus says, uh, go and be made well. Your faith has made you whole. Certainly there is. But there's also times when God heals because he wants to heal. And that was one of these times. Immediately, this man was healed. Now, do I believe God still heals? Yes, I do. Do I believe it's a ordinary thing? No, I don't. How can you say that, preacher? Because if it was an ordinary thing, there wouldn't be so many Christians in the hospital. Wouldn't be so many Christians dying of COVID if it was an ordinary thing. Uh, and and, and, and I, I, I say that, not, not trying to, to seem um, harsh in that angle, but I'm telling you, there's so many fake healers today that doesn't line up with what the Bible does. These men, they came along. He said, I don't have any silver. I don't have any gold. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up and walk. And immediately when Peter touched him, the Bible used the term immediately, which meant right then, right then, right then. There wasn't no, go pray about it. There wasn't no, give us an offering. They wasn't no testify before God heals. You know, immediately this man was healed. And look what happened. It says, so in verse eight, so he leaping up <laughs> stood and walked and entered the temple. Can you imagine the joy that this man had? Can you imagine the, 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 just the pure feeling of joy and, and thankfulness to God? This old boy had been, been stricken his whole life, but yet, yet God had touched him. And it says here, he was walking, leaping, and praising God. And then verse 9 says, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Now, these same people would have seen him uh, being a beggar all his life. The same people. But yet now this man is praising God because God has done something for him. I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters. Uh, we often look at these Bible miracles and we say, wow, man, God had never done nothing like that in my life. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you've been saved, if you have been touched by the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been a part of the greatest miracle that there ever has been. And that is taking a dead person in their sin and giving them new life. That's a miracle. And so this leads me to a self-evaluation. This man experienced a, a, a miracle of God, but yet he goes out and starts leaping and praising God. Do I look at my salvation and do I get excited enough uh, knowing what Jesus did for me, does that cause me to want to testify? Does it cause me to want to give praise to him and to tell everybody I can what Jesus has done? I'm going to tell you something. The last 50 years, the church as a whole does not evangelize. 
And there's all kind of excuses people make. I'm afraid. I'm timid. I'm, I've been in classes and I, I've, I've heard all these excuses. And that's just what they are, excuses, folks. If you've truly been saved, that means Jesus has done a work in your life. And, and bless God, you ought to be testifying about that work he's done in your life. Or could it be that there hadn't been a work done in your life? I, I pray it not so, but could it be? You know, if you understand, again, read, read the book of Ephesians chapter 2. And, and look how Paul calls us prior to being saved. Dead man walking is what he says. So this man was praising God. And then in verse number 10, it said, Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were all filled with wonder and amazement at what happened to him. Isn't that the story that should be for every believer? I know it may not be in your life. Maybe an arm has never grown back or maybe, you know, a leg grew back or whatever. I know that that's probably not happened to most of us. But, but shouldn't people around us be amazed at what Christ has done in our life? Shouldn't we live in such a way that's going to draw glory and honor to him? You know, on our wall in our bedroom of this house we're selling, we have a stencil picture put on the wall that Jennifer did. And it's probably one of my top five favorite Bible verses. And it, and it says simply, uh, let your light so shine uh, before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. And that's what it is for us as believers. We have a testimony. He has done a miracle in our life, and he deserves the glory and honor for it. Well, I'm going to stop right there. I have a minute and 55 seconds over my time. This is Brother Don, your Bible teacher. I hope this has blessed you. If there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. And just remember now, my family loves you. I love you dearly. But Jesus, he loves you. He died for you. Now walk in him. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.